Good afternoon. I am Captain Taylor Bergeron, and I will serve as your Master of Ceremonies for today's event. I would like to recognize our official party. Vermont's Governor, Philip Scott. Vermont's Adjutant General, Major General Gregory Knight. Senior Advisor to the Adjutant General, Command Sergeant Major Paul Edwards. And Master Sergeant Ryan Breyer. We are also honored to have with us today, representing Senator Bernie Sanders, Beth Stern. Representing Senator Peter Welch, James McNerney, and the Vermont legislatures in attendance. We welcome the soldiers, airmen, and friends of the Vermont National Guard, as well as the members of the original Fallen Heroes Memorial Committee, the Vermont National Guard Charitable Foundation, and our honorary commanders. And, of course, we extend a special welcome to our retirees. I would like to provide special recognition to all of our Gold Star families in attendance. Family of Sergeant Jamie Gray, Steve Gray, Elizabeth Fitch, and Haley Moulton. Family of Specialist Christopher Merchant, Staff Sergeant Dean Jones, and Monica Merchant. Family of Specialist Scott McLaughlin, Vicki and Kevin McLaughlin, and Shalina Hansen. Family of Second Lieutenant Mark Procopio, Lieutenant Colonel Erica Procopio. Family of Kyle Gilbert, Regina Meckel. Each has received a yellow rose to place at the memorial after the ceremony. The yellow rose symbolizes remembrance and enduring friendship. Please rise as we honor America with the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Ryan Breyer, Vermont Air National Guard, will offer an invocation. I invite you to prayer. Gracious God, you call men and women into the military to lead, guide, and protect the most precious rights you endow upon all people, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we come before you today in remembrance of the women and men of the Green Mountain Boys, as well as all U.S. service members who have given the ultimate sacrifice to protect your most precious rights. For their loved ones, we lift them up, and we ask that you ease their sorrows with your presence and surround them in your love. 
May we continue to remember and honor our fallen military members who once brought light to places in the world troubled by the darkness. And we pray that these service members who once fought on the front lines will be ushered to the front of the line of your heavenly gates. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Master Arm Breyer. Please be seated. We thank you all for taking the time to be here today. Perhaps the first day of remembrance was organized by formerly enslaved people and white missionaries in Charleston, South Carolina on May 1st, 1865. The event occurred at a former race course that had served as a Confederate prison for Union soldiers during the war's final year. At least 257 prisoners had perished there, primarily due to disease, and were buried in unmarked graves. African Americans of Charleston meticulously arranged graves into orderly rows and erected a nine foot high white fence around them, creating what they called the Martyrs of the Racecourse Memorial. A parade of 10,000 to and through the grounds included the placement of flowers on the grave sites. The grave sites were transformed into a breathtaking sea of flowers, as described by the New York Tribune, and the event was hailed as a procession of mourning and remembrance, unlike anything South Carolina or the United States had witnessed before. On May 5th, 1868, John A. Logan, the Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, an organization of Civil War veterans, issued General Order Number 11. This order designated the 30th day of May, 1868, for the purpose of decorating the graves of comrades who had died in the defense of their country during the Civil War. The General Order also intended the observance continue from year to year with the specific desire to involve the public across all parts of the country. This day came to be known as Decoration Day and was adopted by many states as a state holiday. After World War I, the holiday evolved to commemorate military personnel lost in all wars and came to be known as Memorial Day. In 1971, President Richard Nixon designated Memorial Day as the last Monday of May, a federal holiday. Today's ceremony is intended to honor the fallen from all conflicts and all branches of service. It will include remarks from our keynote speakers, the placing of the wreath at the Fallen Heroes Memorial and other military traditions for rendering honors to our fallen service members and their families who have sacrificed so much in service to our country. At this time, it is my honor to introduce the Adjutant General of the State of Vermont, Major General Gregory Knight. Welcome, everybody. Governor Scott, distinguished guests, soldiers and airmen of our Vermont National Guard, and most importantly, our Gold Star families. Thank you for joining us today for our observance of Memorial Day. Today we remember our fallen and the many who have gone before us from all services across all generations. And every year as we observe Memorial Day, I struggle to find appropriate words to capture the gravity of the day. It's an uncomfortable topic, talking about the death of our colleagues. What's important than this is not how they died, it's how they lived. So this year I came to the realization that perhaps it's worthwhile to share the truly selfless service of those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to others. I could share many stories about this, too many perhaps, but I'll share two of them with you today. Staff Sergeant Joe Proctor, an Indiana Guardsman 
was with us during our deployment to Ramadi, Iraq. On May 3rd, 2006, Joe's assignment placed him at OP-293. This is a reinforced observation post to the north of the city of Tamim, in a place we called Five Kilo. In the early afternoon, the post came under intense, indirect, small arms fire. The initial attack was a diversion, part of a complex attack to destroy the post with a vehicle-borne suicide bomb, a dump truck loaded with explosives, attempting to ram through the gate to the compound. Sergeant so Proctor immediately stood his ground, engaging the driver of the truck with his rifle. He did not waver. He did not flinch. He engaged the vehicle head on as it was moving towards him and the other members of his team. He killed the driver of the dump truck before it could enter further into the interior of the compound. Sergeant Proctor was mortally wounded when the bomb detonated. Joe posthumously received the Silver Star for his incredible bravery and the lives he saved that day. On November 5, 2005, Second Lieutenant Mark Procopio, Vermont Army National Guard Infantry Officer, son and husband of a Vermont Guard family, was on patrol with his team to the north of Ramadi. He received word of a Marine Corps Super Cobra had crashed in Jazeera, north of Ramadi a very contested and kinetic area of operations. The status of the crew, Captain Michael Martino and Major Jerry Bloomfield, was unknown. Without hesitation, and knowing full well the risk, the risk he was assuming, Mark directed his patrol to immediately respond to the crash site. While en route to the downed aircraft, Mark was killed when his Humvee was struck by an improvised explosive device. Even facing incredible danger and the very real potential of losing their life, these soldiers did not shrink from their duties, not for a moment. From John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. I often wonder where we find such people in hindsight, I shouldn't be surprised at their character of service. It's who they were. Some have asked me what Memorial Day means to me. I can tell you I don't have words to describe how it feels to have the absolute honor and privilege to call these soldiers and others like them a colleague and a friend. There are thankfully many more like them. Memorial Day is a reminder that it is incumbent upon us to remember and celebrate them and their sacrifice, support their families, and know they have shown us the way, placing the needs of others before themselves. Those in uniform and their families know military service is rarely convenient. It can be stressful, challenging, rewarding, and yes, at times dangerous. For those who have given their lives, let us keep them and our Gold Star families close to our thoughts and always in our hearts. The bronze plaques you see here are so much more than just names and places. This was built as a memorial of forever, so we can remember our fallen were sons, fathers, husbands, and brothers. Remember them not once a year, but always. They were our friends and colleagues. And they serve not as individuals, but as part, of a, as, a, as part of a collective team working to make our world a better place. Remember them. We are better for having had them in our lives. You know, I found a quote from Pete Hegseth that rings true with me. Memorial Day isn't just about honoring veterans. It's honoring those who lost their lives. Veterans had the good fortune of coming home. And for us, that's a reminder of when we come home, we still have a responsibility to serve. It's a continuation of service that honors our country and those who fell defending it.
God bless you all. God bless America. And God bless our fallen heroes and their families. Thank you. Thank you, General Knight. I would now like to introduce our Commander-in-Chief, Philip Scott, the Governor of the State of Vermont. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, General Knight, and thank you for your service as well as your leadership. And thanks to those who served or are serving across the state and country, and to your families as well. My heart goes out to all the Gold Star families, those here today and those at home, as we come together to grieve with you. I appreciate General Knight having shared the stories of Sergeant Proctor and Lieutenant Proc Procopio, two incredible stories of bravery and ultimate selflessness, putting the safety of others before their own. And there are so many other stories out there that span centuries, so many from Vermont who have stepped up and put themselves in harm's way for others on behalf of our country. I also know that sacrifice doesn't always end on the battlefield. There are many who come home but lost their lives as a result of what they went through in war. That includes my dad, Sergeant Howard Scott, who came back home as a double amputee after World War II, and Sergeant Wesley Black, a friend and colleague for many here today. To all who have lost a family member, friend, or fellow soldier, Please know their sacrifice and your family's sacrifice is not forgotten. And I know we cannot take it for granted. Reflecting on this is what Memorial Day is about. We show up here to remember them. Importantly, as General Knight said, not just to reflect on their death, but to celebrate their lives, their character, and their legacy. And we have a lot to be proud of and grateful for here in Vermont, with brave men and women stepping up throughout history and leaving their mark. But our gratitude and our work to live up to the values and ideals these soldiers fought and died for needs to be something we pay attention to every day. And the best way to honor them is to follow their example, whether that's through military service which we need more of, or looking for other ways to give back by finding opportunities to put the needs of others first and be a part of something bigger than themselves. That's what our service men and women have done. It's what all those who we honor today have done. And I hope we can all reflect on what we can do individually and collectively to earn that sacrifice. There's no real way we can repay for all you've given. But at the very least, we can simply say thank you. So I share my thanks and respect today for your service, your leadership, and your sacrifice. And I sincerely appreciate being included again this year. Again, thank you. Thank you, Governor Scott. In 1915, during a terrible 17-day battle in Ypres, Belgium, a Canadian surgeon by the name of Lieutenant Colonel John McRae wrote the poem, In Flanders Fields. It was based on his experience during those seven days, 17 days, his view of the poppies from a nearby cemetery blowing in a gentle breeze and his frustration at the loss of his young friend and former student, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer. This poem became one of the most famous war poems and is often read at Remembrance Day or Memorial Day ceremonies in the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States. 
We will also have a reading of, a po of the poem, We Shall Keep the Faith, written by Moena Michael. Miss Michael came across Colonel McRae's poem in 1918 and was so moved by it, she penned, We Shall Keep the Faith in response. A teacher from Georgia, she had been in Europe when the First, war, First World War broke out. After the war, she taught a class of disabled servicemen at the University of Georgia. Realizing the need for financial assistance for these veterans, she organized the selling of red silk poppies to raise funds and eventually become known as the Poppy Lady. Here today to read these poems are First Lieutenant Kevin Burke of the Vermont Army National Guard at reading In Flanders Field and Master Sergeant Troy Coughlin of the Vermont Air National Guard reading We Shall Keep the Faith. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved, and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders Field. We shall keep the faith. <clears throat> oh, you who sleep in Flanders Fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish, too, the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honor of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught. We'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders Field. Thank you, Lieutenant Burke and Master Sergeant Coughlin. As part of General Logan's General Order Number 11, he directed the strewing of the flowers as a means of decorating the graves of fallen comrades. Today, wreaths are commonly used during Memorial Day celebrations. The circular shape of the wreath symbolizes eternity and immortality. Governor Scott and Major General Knight will lay a wreath at the base of the memorial in honor of our state service members who have died in the service to their country. Please rise and stand in silence while Command Sergeant Major Paul Edwards, Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Adjutant General, reads the names of the Vermont Army National Guard Global War on Terror Fallen Heroes we honor today while the wreath is placed. Operation Iraqi Freedom, Sergeant Will William Normandy, Task Force Red Leg, 15 March 2004. Staff Sergeant Kevin Sheehan, Task Force Red Leg, 25 May 2004. Sergeant Alan Bean Jr., Task Force Red Leg, 25 May 2004. Staff Sergeant Jamie Gray, Task Force Red Leg, 7 June 2004. Master Sergeant Chris Chapin, Task Force Sabre, 23 August 2005. First Lieutenant Mark Dooley, Task Force Sabre, 19 September 2005. Sergeant Scott McLaughlin, Task Force Sabre, 22 September 2005. 
Second Lieutenant Mark Procopio, Task Force Sabre, 2 November 2005. Sergeant Joshua Johnson, Task Force Sabre, 25 January 2006. Specialist Christopher Merchant, Task Force Sabre, 1 March 2006. Operation Enduring Freedom, Master Sergeant John Stone, Task Force Catamount, 28 March 2006. Specialist Ryan Grady, Task Force Wolverine, 1 July 2010. Sergeant Tristan Southworth, Task Force Avalanche, 22 August 2010. And Sergeant Stephen Deluzio, Task Force Av Avalanche, 22 August 2010. Please be seated. It is customary during these ceremonies to honor our fallen service members by firing three volleys and playing taps, reminiscent of the honors provided during a military burial. The firing of three volleys comes from an old battlefield custom. Two warring sides would agree to cease hostilities to clear their fallen from the battlefield. And the firing of three volleys meant that all had been properly cared for and the side was ready to resume the battle. To honor our fallen, our firing party will fire three rifle volleys. The bugle called taps originated during the Civil War with the Army of the Potomac. Union Army Brigadier General Daniel Butterfield didn't like the bugle call that signal soldiers in the camp to put out the lights and go to sleep. He worked out the melody of taps with his brigade bugler, Private Oliver Wilcox Norton. The call later came into another use as the figurative call to the sleep of eternal rest for our soldiers. Please stand and render proper honors for the firing party salute, the playing of taps, and the lowering of the flag of the Green Mountain Armory to half staff. Gracious, loving God, as we close this ceremony, we want to give you thanks. Thank you for this time to gather and honor our fallen heroes. Thank you for the memories of our comrades, their good deeds, and their friendship. Thank you for their loyalty to God and country. And we thank you that their good works have preserved our nation's right to be free, secure, and pursue happiness. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We thank you all for attending. At this time, families are invited to approach the memorial and honor their soldiers with their flowers. <laughs>